Did you know that Johnny Depp's and Amber Heard's appeal could last up to three years? Let me explain why. Hi there, my name is Catherine. I'm a lawyer and I also think differently. Before we move on, I noticed that our channel now has a super thanks button and we'd like to use that for something good. We'd like to ask for your help. If you donate using the super thanks button, we will in turn donate that to a nonprofit organization called The Family Place. It provides shelter, counseling, and skills for victims of domestic violence. It's the only one in the state of Texas that offers not just shelter for women, but also for men and children as well. Our goal is to raise $75 that we can donate to the family place because $75 is what they need to provide one night of shelter to a victim of domestic violence. Thank you so much for considering donating. To understand why the appeals process is such a long time, the best way to do that is to understand what is actually involved when appealing your case. In my other video, I talk about the appeals process in my part one video. There, I explained how in Judge Ascarati's court, there was a jury trial, and we all saw how the jury reached a verdict. And once there was a jury verdict, the jury verdict was then entered as a judgment by Judge Ascarati. Once there was a final judgment entered in the circuit court, and that's what you call Judge Ascarati's court, that's when Johnny Depp and Amber Heard heard could start the appeals process. We'll put in the description below the link for that other video where I talk about part one of the appeals process. So check it out when you get a chance. The appeals process actually involves both the Court of Appeals and the Supreme Court. And since this is in Virginia, which is a state court, then we're talking about the Court of Appeals of Virginia and the Supreme Court of Virginia. Here's a cool diagram to show you visually how that works, where Judge Ascarati's court is in the district court or the lower court, and the next court after that is the Court of Appeals, and after the Court of Appeals is the Supreme Court. Let me walk you through the process of how Amber Heard and Johnny Depp could appeal their case from the Court of Appeals to the Supreme Court of Virginia. Let's talk about the Court of Appeals of Virginia first. Since the legal process in the district court or Judge Ascarati's court is done once the judgment was entered, then we move to the Virginia Court of Appeals, which is where we see Johnny Depp and Amber Heard's case going on right now. In my other video where I talk about how Amber Heard's appeal could be dismissed, I discuss the new rules in the Virginia Court of Appeals that has been implemented on January 1st, 2022. By the way, I hope you don't mind me mentioning my other videos in this video. I'm doing that because I don't want to have to repeat what I said in the other video. So whenever you get a chance, go ahead and check those out and we'll link in the description below all the videos that I'm referencing here. The new rules of the Virginia Court of Appeal that allowed an appellant to appeal as a matter of right made it faster for an appellant to appeal from the district court to the Court of Appeals. That's why we saw how Johnny Depp and Amber Heard were able to file a notice of appeal and post their appeals bond. That's how their appeals process started right away with the Court of Appeals within a very short amount of time. As opposed to the old rule before January 1st, 2022, where Danny Depp and Amber Heard would have had to file a petition for appeal and then wait for the Court of Appeals to decide if they're going to hear their appeal. The next step after actually getting into the Court of Appeals and having the record from the District Court or Judges Karate Court transferred into the Court of Appeal to create the record and appeal, then we are now on what is called the briefing schedule. That's what Amber Heard and Johnny Depp are into right now procedurally with the Court of Appeals. 
in general, there are three briefs involved in this briefing schedule. Let's talk about that terminology so we can all make sure to refer to those briefs appropriately. The first one is called the opening brief. And then the second one after that is called the response brief. And the third one after that is called the reply brief. Who files these three briefs and in what order? This is how it works. First, the opening brief is filed by the appellant. And then the response brief is filed by the appellee in response to the opening brief. And then the reply brief is filed by the appellant in response to the response of the appellant. I know it sounds kind of confusing, so let's put that into context of Johnny Depp and Amber Heard's filing. But first, we have to remember that there are two appeals going on both at the same time. Think of it as two roads paralleling each other. One of the roads or one of the appeal involves Amber Heard's appeal. And then the second road or the second appeal involves Johnny Depp's appeal. So let's talk about Amber Heard's appeal first. In talking about Amber Heard's appeal, since in this lane of appeal, she is the appellant, then she gets to file an opening brief as the appellant. Johnny Depp gets to file a response brief as the appellee. And then Amber Heard has another chance to respond to what Johnny Depp is arguing. She does that by filing her reply brief. Similarly, in this lane where Johnny Depp is the appellate, he gets to file an opening brief, which we already saw he filed, and then Amber Heard as the appellee gets to file a response brief, and then Johnny Depp has another chance to file a reply brief this time, which is a reply to what Amber Heard is arguing before. In my other video where I talk about how Amber Heard requested additional time to file her opening brief, I discuss the time frame of the briefing schedule right now based on Amber Heard's request for an extension of time. As I mentioned in that video, that requesting an extension of time is pretty normal for lawyers, especially new appeals lawyers like Amber Heard. So go ahead and check out that video. The link is in the description below. Based on the time frame of when you file the opening brief, the response brief, and the reply brief, the briefing schedule should have been originally done around December. But since Amber Heard filed for a request for extension of time, the briefing schedule now got extended up to January. Of course, requesting an extension of time means that the briefing schedule has been delayed. That's why Johnny Depp's team actually opposed Amber Heard's request for an extension of time because her request basically extended the briefing schedule, which means that it delayed the appeals process in general. So now you know that three briefs must be filed in both Amber Heard's appeal and Johnny Depp's appeal. Before we move on, if you can tell me which part of the world you're watching from, that will be great. I love knowing where my viewers are from and what kind of videos you'd like me to create some more. And any questions you have, please go ahead and put that in the comments below and try to answer them for you. Now, what happens after all of those three briefs have been filed with the Court of Appeals of Virginia? After the briefing schedule, the next step in the appeals process is the oral argument. Whether or not there will be an oral argument in Johnny Depp and Amber Heard's appeals will really depend on the Court of Appeals because oral argument is not automatic. There are certain criteria that the Court of Appeals will consider whether or not there will be an oral argument for an appeal. I'll talk about that more in detail when I discuss oral argument when the time comes. But for now, to keep this video simpler, I just want to mention that yes, oral argument is not mandatory and there has to be a reason why the Court of Appeal would want an oral argument. And the oral argument will be based on whether or not the oral argument is just on Amber Heard's appeal or whether or not the oral argument is just on Johnny Depp's appeal or whether or not there will be an oral argument involving both of their appeals. So it'll be interesting. I would suspect that if the Court of Appeal wants an oral argument 
relating to an issue that Amber Heard raised or an issue that Johnny Depp raised that they will probably consolidate that together into one hearing. But who knows, there might be two different oral argument hearings, depending on what the Court of Appeals believe is the best use of their time and also the best way to sort out all the issues that they want to resolve. Since the oral argument is not mandatory and is really based on the discretion of the Court of Appeals, that's the part of the appeals process that can be expedited. If the Court of Appeals decide that there's no reason for an oral hearing, then what happens is they'll just skip that whole thing and move to actually just giving out a written opinion or a written decision as to why they're ruling for a certain appeal. They could do that for both or either Amber Heard's appeal or Johnny Depp's appeal. The oral argument and the written decision of the Court of Appeals will involve a panel. A panel is composed of three Court of Appeals judges. If there's an oral argument, there will be three Court of Appeals judges in that panel. And then that same three judges will issue the written decision for that appeal. Currently, there are 22 Court of Appeals judges, and here are their pictures. We don't know yet who will be in the three Court of Appeals judges panel that Amber Heard and Johnny Depp will have. We'll be curious to see if there would be three Court of Appeals judges in Amber Heard's panel and three in Johnny Depp's. I would be surprised if that was the case. I think it will be more efficient for the Court of Appeals judges to have the same three Court of Appeals judges in one panel and the same three Court of Appeals judges in the other panel as well. When are we going to find out who those three Court of Appeals judges will be? We don't know. We'll just have to wait and see when the Court of Appeals assigns those three judges. When the Court of Appeals judges issues their written decision, that's when we find out whether or not Amber Heard's appeal wins or Johnny Depp's appeals win, and what does the court want to do in terms of instructions for both Amber Heard and Johnny Depp, and even instructions for judges Karate's court. So the written decision is where the Court of Appeals will explain in a very lengthy document why they made their ruling, what's the basis of their ruling. It will have the facts, the law, the evidence that they're relying on, and anything else they want to put in there to explain what their decision is. What options does the losing party have after the written decisions of the Court of Appeal has been issued? Here's where it gets a little bit complicated, so please bear with me. Just for hypothetical sake, let's say that Amber Heard lost her appeal, that the written decision says that she loses her appeal. The first option Amber Heard has if she loses her appeal is to file a petition for rehearing. A petition for rehearing is in Rule 5A33, and there it explains what a petition for rehearing is, which means that three judges of the Court of Appeals will rehear her appeal. It could be the same three judges as the ones who wrote the written decision that says she loses on appeal. The same three judges can rehear her appeal when practicable. That's what Rule 5A33 says as to whether or not the same three judges will be hearing her case when practicable. The second option that Amber Heard has if she loses her appeal under written decision is to file a petition for rehearing and bump. En banc is a French term that means all judges. And I'm sure I just butchered that pronunciation. So I apologize all my French viewers or anyone who speaks French. I'm not sure how to pronounce that properly. I even tried to Google it and just follow it. En banc. En banc. En banc. En banc. I think that's how you pronounce it. So I apologize. But again, it means all judges. Rule 5A34 is the rule that applies for requesting a petition for a hearing on bond. Even though it means all judges here in the Virginia Court of Appeals, at least 13 judges have to hear the appeal again. So it doesn't have to be all 22 judges, at least 13 of them have to rehear the appeal of whoever the losing party is. And here in our hypothetical, we're saying it's Amherst. 
whether or not the losing party on appeal chooses option one, which is a petition for a rehearing for three Court of Appeals judges, or chooses option two, which is a petition for a hearing of all of the judges, or at least 13 judges, the same procedure applies for those two options, which includes another briefing schedule and oral argument. Also, it's unclear with my reading of the rules whether or not you as the losing party, and here in our hypothetical it's Amber Heard, whether or not if she loses her appeal, she can choose option one first, which is request a petition for a hearing with three Court of Appeals judges, and then if she loses there, if she can then file a petition for a rehearing and bonk. So that means that the whole procedure of appeal will be three times. Times. The first original appeal that she lost, and then the option one, which is the rehearing with three judges, and then she goes to option two, which is rehearing and bonk. What happened next if Amber Heard also loses her rehearing with the three judges or the rehearing and bonk? If Amber Heard loses in the Court of Appeals and has exhausted all of the appeals process in the Virginia Court of Appeal, then her next step will be to file a petition to be heard with the Virginia Supreme Court. The Virginia Supreme Court does not consider all cases that is requesting to be heard in their court. They have certain criteria that allows them to hear a particular case. And I won't go through that here in this video to make this video simple. We'll go over that if ever it goes to that part of the appeal, which hopefully not. But if it does go to the Supreme Court of Virginia, then it also has to go through the briefing schedule and oral argument and then the written decision, almost similar to the Court of Appeals. Of course, there's different time frame and different requirements, but we're going to see the same similar type of procedure in terms of briefing schedule and oral argument and then written decision. As you can see, from when the judgment was entered in Judge Haskarati's court, going through the Court of Appeals of Virginia, then possibly going to the Supreme Court of Virginia, we're talking about years, and it could be three years, it could even be more. It depends when the parties are requesting extension of time and any other delay that happens in between that whole process. But now you see the overview of why this appeals process for the losing party could last a very long time. For now, we are still in the Court of Appeals in the briefing schedule. So if you want to know more as to the specific deadlines for both Amber Heard's appeal and Johnny Depp's appeal, go ahead and check out our video there. Please don't forget to hit subscribe. It will really help our channel use legal analysis to make positivity louder. That's our new banner. Go check it out. We really would like to make things more positive. The world, the news, and social media could be negative at times. But if our channel can be more devoted and intentional in making things positive, especially using legal analysis, we're here to make that happen. So go ahead and please support us and we appreciate you.